this is a note on how to set up Google Earth in your computer and also in your phone so that you can get a picture, a, a display that looks like this. And with this display, this is, this is a Hurricane uh, Dorian uh, going up the coast. And what these pictures are, these are buoys that have cameras on them. These are buoys that have cameras on them. And then we want this picture set up in such a way that every time we open Google Earth on our phone or in our computer, this will automatically update so we can tell when we're going to get a pic, when, when, when we can see a hurricane approaching one of these cameras. For example, here's 41009. That's going to be on such a date here. We'll look at that in just a minute in more detail. But it looks like it's going to eventually go right by several cameras. So that's the setup, and we want to do that uh, so it updates automatically. Now, I've got detailed instructions. This is a red thing. Disregard that. I, there was, I did something wrong. Well, I, I misinterpreted what the National Hurricane Center had done with a particular file. But anyway, that's all sorted out now, and so it updates properly. So when you look at this uh, online, the red will probably be gone. But anyway, there's an article, and I'll put a link to the article, which shows the process with pictures step by step about how you set this up. I'm going to just quickly illustrate and click a few of the buttons and show how this works for now. But then you can later come back to get the details and do more slowly with these instructions that are online and then on down to uh, putting it in your phone. Uh, there's a few steps to that. Okay, but let's do the fast part first because in this article here, at the very end, I made some real shortcuts. That means if you want to get started with Hurricane Dorian right now, within minutes, have all this on your phone and working properly, then you can use these custom-made files. Basically, this article is about how to make these files, but I've already made them here for Dorian, Hurricane Dorian. So you would go to that article, whose link will be in the description, and then you just download these. Let's say one of those, uh, and I'm going to download it to a folder called Dorian. That looks perfect. And then I'm going to download this one. One is the track. One is the cone of uncertainty. And then this one is from a different government agency where all the buoys are located. So now I've got all three of those. All three of those. Uh, let me go. Okay, so there's all three of those. And then here's a blank, here's a open. Now all you have to do here is just grab all three of those and bring them over here and drop them. And then every, that, that's how easy that is. Now once that's loaded, this red spot is where the storm is right now. Latest update was 5 p.m. Pacific, uh, 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And then these are where it's going to be... Um, 2 p.m. on September 4th. And then this is like 41. There is the picture of this. Now let's see, 4 plus 3 is 7. Oh, it's getting, getting dark or it's getting cloudy over there already. That's interesting. So this is already a buoy. And then the article shows you that this is not a very high resolution, we, a very resolution picture of what we can see from this buoy. So what we have to do is then actually go to that buoy. Let me actually just do that. What's that? 41009. Let me just go up here and just say National Data Buoy Center 41009. Go. Because it's getting dark out there now. And then I'm there. Then once you see this, you have to click it again, then click it again. And then this is what we can see on the buoy. Uh, so if it gets all socked in, then we don't get to see much of this thing. But the idea here, the whole the whole exercise in this, the whole exercise in this is to for mariners to be prepared. What do you see on the horizon when you're in the unfortunate circumstance of having one of these in the in the vicinity? Also, as we show many times, these are well forecasted systems, and this one, and they often move slow. They could get up to going 20 knots, but usually they're going slow, and you can almost always, or hopefully always, maneuver out of them if they get uh, maneuver away from them. 
we have a lot of that written in our textbooks and so forth. Okay, so that is that. So that's how we've got it into a computer and working and so forth. Now, this will, these all come into your computer over here where, oh, what's going on here? Um, this is all these tracks. Oh, okay. I don't need to see all this track. See, these have all loaded into what's called temporary places. So what you do then is you just close Google Earth, and when it says, uh, do you want to save them, you say yes, and it'll move them from the temporary places up above that line into the real places, then they'll be there. Then every time you open this, they'll, they'll be there. Okay, so that's how you get those once you're done into your uh, program, your computer version of Google Earth. Now what we need to do is take each of these files one at a time and then mail them to yourself. Mail them to yourself and then we're going to, let's see if I can bring this over without getting, whoops, without getting in too much trouble. Okay, so here's a phone. Whoa, the big phone. I have a little driver's problems here. Okay, so then I would go to the mail. Oh, I can't click it here. I have to click the actual phone, of course. Click the mail. Okay, those are the three I mailed to myself. Then what you would do is open one of these mails, like the top one, like that. And then it's going to have this, you can see the attachment here right now what you do is don't tap it if you tap it it's going to open up and show you some text file of this code but you just put your finger on and hold it then after you hold it for a while this comes up the list here then you slide this over till you get to uh, where okay then he, where cop okay there it is I got a lot of functions on here it looks like copy to Google Earth bang so you copy to Google Earth, and that one's done. Okay, what did it do? Oh, that was the buoys. Okay, so then I've got to go um, back to the mail, and then do, uh, that was the buoys. Now this is the track, and I'm just doing this. Okay, I'll hold this one down. Then I'm going to slide this over, and then a copy to Google Earth. That's that one. So what did that bring in? Uh, I don't see anything on that. Let me go and click this button. And then you go to My Places. Click that button. And then here is this one. So let me say fly here. Whatever that is. Huh. What's happening? I'm not... Oh, okay. I don't... Oh, wait. Hang on just a minute. I'm trying to drive... I don't know what I'm pointing at. If I click here, it does absolutely nothing. I've got to be careful and touch the phone. Okay. So let me go back one more. No, no. Wait a minute. I'm going to click here. I'm going to go get the mail. I want to get the last one. The last one, which is the, the cone of uncertainty. The cone of uncertainty, because that's always, keep that in mind, uh, then, uh, because this thing could actually go a lot of places, not just right on that track. Now I'm holding that down, um, and nothing's happening for the time being. Ah, there I did it wrong. Uh, done. I'm going to hit done. Now I'm going to try again, holding it down. That's better. So there's a, I don't know, hold it down without jiggling the finger. Maybe that's a trick. Okay, then I copy that here. Okay, now, and again, that's so far not showing anything, not showing the cone. Um, let me go back up to the top button up here, my places, and then where do we got the cone? Fly to the cone. Okay, now everybody's working. All right, so now I'm going to just show you, whoops, I'm going to just show you how this works. You can then, if you want, you would click here for the latest location. Let's see if I can click that. There's the latest location. Okay, that's good. Close it. But now, let's go over here and just see uh, when is this, uh, okay, I'm going to, there's the buoy. When is this guy going to be here? Okay, I'll click that. So he's going to actually go by that buoy. 
September 4th. That, well, I bet that thing is going. You got to. That's why this thing has to update. This buoy. Okay, let's go back. I'm guessing that's going to be there a lot earlier than that. Once that storm gets out and gets into that water, the Gulf Stream, the temperature is going to go up. The water temperature is going to go up about five degrees, something like that. And it could well be that that storm will just take off then, build up a little more steam and then take off and go a little faster. I'm not sure. But anyway, there's some, something's likely to happen. That's um, Okay, so then, but then here's the buoy. We can click this guy here. I click him, and what do I see? Okay, it's getting dark over there. Oh, And you have to, to move that. Wait a minute, let's see. Oh, that's not right. Well, let me try again. Click it. I okay. Well, I can't. I can't expand it right now, but because I've got too many fingers going, and I'm going to stop. I don't want to be too long on this. But anyway, that'll work, and you can see that. In any event, you're not going to want to look at just that picture. That picture has a very low resolution of what the buoy is. You've got to go to that actual buoy, you know, open up a browser on your phone, then go to Google that 41009, and then go to that. Uh, so I'm going to stop with that for the time being. Okay, so that is the short story. Now let's come back and say, and, and then I, ju I just want to illustrate a couple points here about how you make these files on your own. I'd like to think it's all clear there, but what you would do is, um, okay, let me just close, close this for now. We don't need that. And then I'm going to uh, take one of these like the cone and just delete it. Right click and delete it. Okay, yeah, delete it. Okay. Now say I want to make the cone from my own. So what you would do is we, we need to know where the file's located. And if you go back here, uh, no, not here. If we go back here to the... Um, Analyses and fork, and this is all in that article, right? It shows you where the links are here. So the cone link is right here. Atlantic, Dorian, here's the cone link. Again, more slowly presented there. And, and you see down here where it's popping open. Oh, let me bring it up higher. Okay, so when I, when I go over the cone, look down, look down in this area right in here, and you see the link. So what I can do is I can right click this guy and say save link, no, copy link address. Okay, I've got it. Now I'm going back to Google Earth and I have no cone. Then I'm going up here, oh, it's, it, I don't know if you can see it. It's the top, there's a menu up here at the top of the screen, at the top of the screen and it says add. Then you go to network f link now, uh, here, you could put anything you want. Dorian Cone. That doesn't matter. What matters is this link, Command-V. Okay, so that's the link. Now go to the refresh. Tell it to do it uh, periodically, maybe every hour. These seconds don't matter. Then down here, so that we can force it to refresh, say on request. There you go, and that's okay, done. Now we've got this cone here, and it's there. And so this is the file. We, where is it? Let's see over here. Cone, Dorian Cone. Now, what you would do to how I made those files is once you see this in your Google Earth over here, right-click this one and say Save Place As, and then you can call it Dorian Cone and put it in your downloads and so forth and say save, okay? Cancel. Then, once you have that in your downloads, then you can mail it around, send it to your friends, do whatever you want, and you've got one. And this will be just good for Dorian. So the next, the next storm that comes along here, um, the next storm that comes along is going to be seven. Six has already passed. And so what you could do is, uh, let's see, open, um, I just want to see, okay, well, 
I think I'll stop there. The, the rest of the information is in there, and you can you can open these with a text editor and see what the actual words are, uh, and, and so forth. But these are these files that are here that are the KMZs are compressed. So you have to read the notes in the article about how to uncompress them, and then you see the KMLs. What you want to do when you save this thing here? Uh, right, right click. Oh, wait, right? Okay, what's going on? Right click, save place as. Now you see, I, I that say KMZ. You don't want that. You want to change that KML. Okay, you want to save these as KML. Okay, then save. Okay, I want to stress that. All right, so that's the end of the video demo. Uh, there, uh, the article has uh, the slower steps of and what's going on behind each one.